Our today's topic is fossils in time and space. Today we will be discussing that how the fossils are present in different times and different places. The earth is old and the distribution of continents and oceans has changed radically over time. We know that the earth is very ancient place. It has different continents and different areas where the organisms have evolved differently. In the past, the scientists were thinking of the life as a very short span. The life has evolved at, with a very short span and the life is not having as much extensive amount of time as we know today. But the latest studies has told us that how the life forms have evolved over a long period of time. The life on Earth was evolved 4 billion years ago and the complex study of the fossil groups are there which are coming and going. There are different uh, fossils which are present in different areas and in different times and those are telling us that how the different living organisms are present in different times. And not only this, but also the continents, the different continents on which we are living, they are also moving from one place to another. So all of the whole things are telling us that not neither the time is static, nor the space is static. Both are the things are changing and along with these changes, the life itself is changing. No. We, if we want to study the fossils, then we have to make some frameworks. There is need of development of geographical and temporal framework. Ge geographical, again, it in relation with the space, right? So where we want to study, for example, if you want to study the fossils of kangaroos, then you would be uh, going to Australia. Right, so, and there you will find the different fossils that will tell you that how the kangaroos evolved. And so is the case for different organisms. If you are interested in the studies of the pandas, then you will go to the China. And so is the case for the temporal frameworks. You want to find the uh, fossils of dinosaurs in the layers which are maybe 30 billion, uh, 30 million years old, you would only find the fossils of the dinosaurs in the layers of the earth which are more than 65 million years old. So it tells us that the you have to be very careful that what you want to study and where you want to study and in which time you want to study. And doing this you need to have the accurate and re reliable methods to chart the distribution of fossils of organism through time and space. If you don't have the methods right, you are not going to get it. For example, our dating techniques, right? So dating techniques means that whenever you find a fossil, you are est estimating its age. Or if you are finding a layer of earth where you have found the fossil, you want to estimate the layer of uh, the age of that layer of the earth. So now if you are not estimating that right, you won't be able to study that more accurately. Now the paleogeographers and stratigraphers are equipped with a range of computer-based high-tech methods. And these computer-based high-tech methods are helpful in uh, they are helping the paleogeographers that where to find those uh, living organ uh, those fossils and the stratigraphers are the ones which are uh, studying the layers of the earth and they will find those layer according to these models and the models describing the distribution of continents oceans and biotas throughout the geological times are also important. 
if uh, we there are some models which are developed and they will tell you that in what kind of environment what kind of biota biota means the collection of all the living organism at that particular place at that particular time and then we are using the fossil information in different fields of life but in particular in the uh, geological as well the geological use of fossil information includes the tectonic history if you want to study the tectonic history of the earth uh, you know that there are some layers of the earth and there are plates of the earth which are colliding together and due to that the earthquakes are coming and the hills and mountain areas are formed due to the tectonic movements now and at the same places you will find the fossils and fossils are helpful in the estimating the age of those areas age of those layers in which those fossils are formed and the fossils are also helpful in the thermal uh, in finding out the thermal maturity of the rocks uh, thermal maturity means that when there is a fossil in a layer of the earth with the time and the constant heat from the uh, earth it will change into the hydrocarbons right so the more it is changed into hydrocarbons it is called more thermally mature and that we can uh, we can study and if you find that there are some fossils which are more thermally mature at that particular place there is more uh, probability that you will find the petroleum there so scientists who are uh, involved in those activities they will be uh, very much interested in that petroleum and also if with the same uh, idea you will be able to have the gas and oil windows in the uh, hydrocarbon expo exploration right so in in this way we are using the paleontology not only assessing that how the life form is present in different areas and in the different time and how we can find those we are evolving some frameworks for that and with that we are using the information in the other areas of the uh, science just like the geology